but an A will give him a scorpion. If you then who are evil, this is Jesus talking out of the minds and red, so you can know who's talking. He said, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Look at your neighbor and say, ask, ask. seek, seek, and knock. knock. You may be seated. Ask, seek. And uh, Amen. we thank God for the word that reminds us that the grass withereth, the flower fades, Amen. but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. If God said it in his word, yes. then it must be true. Yes. Because he said that heaven and earth would pass away before one letter of his word fails. You can trust God's word because he spoke it from the same mouth that spoke things into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. He thanks us for being faithful, and he told us that he would reward us if we were faithful over a few things. He would make us ruler over many things. The Bible teaches us much about prayer. It tells us that man ought always pray and not faint. The Bible tells us that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. And Paul said that we should pray without ceasing. Amen. Many Christians still have a misguided understanding of what prayer is all about. For most of us, prayer in our minds is a one-way conversation where we tell God what we need and he answers our needs, as opposed to us being in a conversation where we are also listening for his instructions in the prayer. He, in this lesson, is Jesus is teaching us about prayer. And he's teaching us as Christians that we must be bold in our prayers to God. If I say bold, bold, for those of us who are on the computer, there is a button that has a B on it that says that when we're typing, if we want to emphasize something, that we are to put it in bold. The word bold means is defined as daring, forceful, and audacious. When you are bold about something, you want to make sure that your point is being made known. And you are not ashamed of what you are presenting. You are bold and daring. You are determined and you are focused on the task at hand. And in this lesson, Jesus is teaching us that we must be bold in our prayers unto God. We should not pray faithless prayers, but faithful prayers, believing that God would answer our needs. I wouldn't serve a God that I couldn't go to every now and again. With terrorist attacks and plane crashes and uh, people dying innocently at the hand of police officers, um, I feel compelled by the power of the Holy Spirit to pray a little bit longer. Anybody have that desire to pray a little bit longer? That you are not praying just for your needs to be met, but you are praying boldly, believing that whatever you're praying for, that God has the power and the purpose to meet every need. How did we become so casual in our prayer lives to God? Many of us uh, have a box beside our bed that we open up every now and again and pull God out of it when we are in a bind or when we are in trouble and we pray to God in, this, in that box and then once we lift that feeble prayer, we put it right back in that box and God is allowed in our minds to operate in the confines of our finite human understanding. But if we are to use our heavenly imagination. God is not limited to that box in our bedside. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. We think one way and God thinks another. Our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. But still we go back to that same box in our prayer life and say stop by the hospital and see brother so and so. Stop by the nursing home and see sister so and so. But God is already in the hospital and he's already in the nursing home and what we need to do is elevate our prayers to another level. 
I don't need to come so casual in our prayer life unto God. It is likely that we prayed for something to happen that did not happen and concluded that God is not concerned about our needs. You prayed for that husband, but he married somebody else. You prayed for this person not to die, and they still die. You prayed for that healing, and that healing did not happen the way that you prayed for. So instead of elevating your prayer life and escalating upstairs, you de-escalated and went downstairs. You only pray now when somebody asks you to pray. And you don't even have the courage to pray for yourself. You're deferring your prayers to somebody else. There's nothing wrong with asking folks to pray for you, but as a Christian, you ought to be bold in your prayers, knowing that God already knows what you need before you even ask, but he has the power to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask to think according to the power that works in you. Now, I feel like preaching today because it's likely that somebody in here prayed for something to happen and it didn't happen. But you got to learn what the word push really means. Push doesn't mean to move one object from one place to another. It literally means to pray until something happens. Many of us stop praying too quick. But we got to be bold in our prayers so that we understand that God must be present not only around us, but in us, because the Spirit make utterance as we are praying for God to answer our need. Amen. Amen. We must pray faithful prayer, believing that God is able to answer our needs. God is wanting us, the church, to be bold in our prayers. Touch your name and say, be bold. A bold prayer is a prayer that touches the very heart of God. A bold prayer is a sincere prayer that God not only hears, but he also feels. And casual Christianity, as George Barner calls it, has created an attitude of comfort in the church. Where would we be without air conditioners in today's church? Where would we be without padded pews and colored carpet to cover our floors? We would be lost without a ship, without a sail. But those from this actor's generation to remember the time that we needed to, to cover the communion table because the windows were open and the flies was coming in. Those of us who had been around a few years, we remember that we didn't have a, a piano and an organ. We had uh, our hands in an old washboard where we made our music. But now you cut the air conditioner off. You take the pads off the pews and the carpet out of the floor. We'll say the church looks ugly. We're in a comfort zone. Uh -huh. right, right. We don't want to come out of our comfort zone uh -huh. because that's messing with our religion. Mm -hmm. It seems that we have concluded that as long as we are comfortable, mm -hmm. then God is on our side. Mm -hmm. God often allows chaos to enter our lives in order to elevate our lazy prayer yes. What would life be like if we never experienced tragedy and tribulation? If you can't stand disappointment sometimes, if you can't stand being lied on sometimes, if you can't stand being disappointed sometimes, you cannot have a cross and a crown. We wouldn't have anything left to pray for. A faithful Christian is one who is not limited to the pains of their circumstance, but one who knows that prayer requires us to be bold in our request for God to meet our needs. Jesus encourages his disciples to pray. Luke chapter 11 records the model prayer. This same prayer is also in a different version in Matthew chapter number 6. And we today know it as the Lord's Prayer. And in this prayer, he gives his disciples pictures of God's goodwill. God desires to bless you. God loves you. God is looking beyond your faults and seeing every one of your needs because he is a benevolent and loving God. Some of us uh, have trouble with calling on God as Father because our fathers were absent from our lives. Or some of us had a father that was there, but he was mean and cruel. And so forth. When we get the word Father, we get a negative feeling, and therefore we think of God as a negative, mean, and cruel, and absent, and passive man. But God is not a man that he should lie 
I know the son of man that he should repent. We serve a good God who not only is benevolent and loving, but he also is a merciful God because he looks beyond your faults and sees every one of your needs. God is better than a neighbor. Because if a neighbor will eventually and reluctantly answer a call for help, won't God willingly hear our prayers? God is better than our human parents. Because if human parents, with all of their faults, would never trick their children, won't God give good gifts to his children? Jesus tells his friends that they can surely trust God and ask him for things. They should knock on his door as long as they have access to him. You better thank God while the blood is still running warm in your veins that you got access to God. You ain't got to wait till you die to try to figure out if he's on your side. While the blood is running warm, you know that God woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. They should knock out his door. To get access to him. And that knocking that Jesus is talking about is none other than the holy power of prayer. They should ask him, especially for his Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know we good Baptist folks. But we thank God for our Kojic friends that remind us about the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit. When we're praying, we should not be praying on our own feeble human will. We should be praying with some power in that prayer. And I'm talking about Holy Ghost power, supernatural, benevolent power that has the power to breathe on us and give life to us in a land full of dry bones. They won't get everything they want, but their needs will always be met. And God's gifts are always good because Paul said he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody asked the question, how do we develop a bold and consistent prayer life? I've been watching, I've been observing as a fellow laborer of the gospel how the church has retracted in its prayer life. There used to be a time that we would get together for no other reason than to pray. And now people see prayer as some type of chore. They don't even see it as necessary. They see it as something that we do in response to a tragedy instead of getting in the presence and the character of an almighty and omnipresent God. How many of you know today that prayer is not something we do because something bad has happened? Prayer is something we do because we serve a good God. No matter what tragedies I see, no matter what trials and tribulations I see, I know because God is good, he gives me the opportunity to pray so that I can see what he sees. In other words, your prayers are not good enough on your own, but when you pray in the power of the Spirit, you will see what God sees. You will look at CNN and feel bad, but you will look at H E A V E N and see something good. I'm talking about heaven. We need to turn on heaven and turn off the TV so we can see what God sees. How do we develop a bold and consistent prayer life? Number one, we move up to the next level in God. Wow. Just never say move up. move up. Well, the Jeffersons had the song that said, well, we're moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. Fish uh, no fry the kitchen bean, no burn on the grill. It took a whole lot of trying just to get up uh, that hill. Now we're up in the big leaves getting our turn and back. Uh, long as we live, you and me, baby, ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm not talking about uh, that apartment on the east side. Uh, what I'm talking about uh, is elevating uh, to the next level of faith. My brothers and sisters, he says to them in verse 5, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. 
<laughs> My brothers and sisters, this friend in this parable is not asking for bread for himself. He's asking for somebody else. Most of us don't even like to call the deacons when we sick. But how many of us are going to call the deacons and tell us that somebody else is sick? My brothers and sisters, we got to be bold as Christians. This man was so bold, he got out of his bed in the middle of the night. Not to ask for bread for himself, but to ask the bread for somebody else. Some of us are from Austin Street. Some of us are from Spartan Court. We're asking, why did the man give him some bread from his own cupboard? Why did he have to go bother somebody else to ask for bread for his friend? And maybe, maybe he didn't have enough bread to give him himself, but he knows somebody that did. My brothers and sisters, we got folk at Mount Amain to talk about they broke, but got four cars sitting in their driveway. They got a closet full of clothes and a bank account full of money. And they will let every dollar fall out of our bank account before they offer one dollar to say that they can help out to somebody in need. And don't you know some selfish folks need your prayers? There's some selfish people that need to be interrupted even in the middle of the night so they can move up to the next level in God. Just never say move up. If you don't move to another level of faith, then that means you are stuck. You are trying to keep God in the box that's comfortable for you. But Jesus is trying to get the disciples to see that Christianity is not a religion of convenience. Christianity is not a religion where things are kept under our own fingertips as we are somehow puppeteers and God is our puppet. God is not a cosmic bellhop. God is not a doll that we can pick up and play with like a fancy toy and we can pick him up and put him down when we feel like it. But God he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. What Jesus is trying to teach us in verse number five is that Christianity is about being bold and vigilant. Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, that word go comes from the Greek word phoreomai, which means to travel, to go, or to behave. So your character, everybody say character. Your character is who you are when nobody's looking. See, a pastor asks you to do something, then you might consider it, but let let another officer of the church to ask you, and you will say to yourself, they ain't my mama, they ain't my daddy, and who gave them the authority to ask me to do something? But you ought to not look at it that way. You ought to see it as a child of God that is in need. How many of you have ever been in need before? In the midnight hour, you had tears in your eyes, and you didn't know who to call on, but God laid it on your heart to call Aunt Jane or Sister Sally, and useless Aunt Jane will be sleeping at that time. But in the middle of the night when you called her, she was there on the phone ready to answer your need. I hope that you never have been in a situation where you felt like that you didn't need anybody and didn't need anything. Because Jesus is trying to teach us as Christians, we not only have to rely on God, but we also have to rely on each other. Move up to the next level in God. Secondly, we have to wake up to meet the needs of others. Just maybe say, wake up. See, somebody's knocking at the door, but in some cases, people aren't listening. Verse six says, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I don't have anything to offer him. Then he will answer from inside and says, don't bother me, the door is already locked. And my children have, and I have gone to bed. I can't get up to give you anything. The word raise is the word that is used. It's from the Greek word engero, which means to stand up, raise up. It literally means to wake up. My brothers and sisters, we are in a nation that is sleeping. We are in a, a state that is sleeping. We are in a town that is sleeping. And only when something catastrophic takes place, we then begin to ponder whether or not God is trying to say something to us. Don't wait to, until a lightning strikes your house in order for you to understand that you have a job to do. Don't wait till another terrorist attack
attack uh, or another plane crash to understand uh, that you have a job to do. Uh, don't wait until uh, another outbreak happens uh, or another police officer gets shot uh, or another drive-by shooting happens uh, and a child gets killed uh, for us to gather together uh, and pray for God to show up in our situation. Uh, what we have to understand is, uh, is that we as a church pray uh, three times a week, uh, but everybody doesn't join us in prayer. Uh, but I hope that they wake up to the point we're seeing uh, that we are in a crisis uh, in this world, uh, and the only way that this world is going to turn around uh, is that God's people uh, start waking up on the inside uh, and start showing a difference in this mean old world. Uh, Jesus is preaching and teaching to uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He knew that they were against him, uh, but he's trying to get them to understand uh, that God has saved their nation, not because they were good, but because he was good. Look at what he's teaching us. He's teaching us to move up to the next level of God. He's teaching us to wake up to meet the needs of others. But thirdly and lastly, we have to show up through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Touch the name and say, show up. show up. My brothers and sisters, how would you feel if someone had given you a birthday party? But everybody showed up to the party except you. How would you feel if somebody asked you to marry them and the wedding was planned and everybody, the bridesmaids, the, the musicians and the preacher showed up, but everybody showed up except you. Many of us uh, want to be honored and respected and loved, but we're not willing to give that love back in return uh, simply by showing up uh, and being a very present help in a time of trouble. Uh, how can we bring about a change if we're not willing to show up? Uh, how are we going to make a difference uh, if we're AWOL when it comes to doing what God has told us to do? Uh -huh. Jesus goes through a powerful illustration. Starting in verse number 10, it says, For everyone who asks, receives. Mm -hmm. Everyone who seeks, finds. Right. And everyone who knocks, the door will be open to them. Yes. My brothers and sisters, go back and evaluate your prayer life and look at the prayers that you have prayed even on this morning. Asking yourself, did you pray for something that only you need? Or did you manage to pray for the Mount Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church? Did you only pray for your family? Or did you pray for the families that are in bereavement? Did you only pray for your bank account? Or did you pray for the bank account for someone today who has no food to eat on the day? Jesus is talking about asking, seeking, and knocking. Because these are levels of progression that we reach in our prayer life because we understand that by faith, God is able to take us to another level. You can't receive something if you don't ask for something. You can't find something if you don't look for it. And you can't have an opportunity open to you if you don't have the courage to knock on the door. Jesus is teaching us that we got to be bold in our prayer lives because God is raising up a generation of Holy Ghost field believers that are not afraid to ask with a sense of urgency to say, ask with a sense of demand, understanding that we are in a crisis and we're not waiting for another tragedy to take place in order for us to understand that God needs soldiers in the army of the Lord. That's all I got to tell you this morning because some of us are waiting for some new information. But the information that you need is already available in the word of God. He says, how many parents will have a child ask for a fish and give them a snake. How many of them will have a child ask for an egg and give them a scorpion? My brothers and sisters, Jesus is using an hyperbole to show them that there are extremes of how we can elevate from someone evil to someone good. The goodness in us is not because of our educational background or our biological pedigree. The goodness of us comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the only 
only way you get the Holy Ghost power is not from a song that's sang or a sermon that's preached. Jesus said you just got to ask for it. How many of you are asking for God's Holy Ghost that not only be showing up in you, but to be shown all around you? I'm so glad today that I heard a word from the Lord to say I got to ask for whatever I need from the Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, don't be scared to ask. Jesus taught that the Heavenly Father gives his children what is good for them and not what harms them. Jesus encouraged the people of God to ask. Touch your neighbor say ask. He noted that the natural father gives good to their children rather than something that would hurt them or that would harm them. How much more will a good God give what is good to his children? I'm so glad that I serve a good God because he will never fail me. He will never leave me, nor he will never forsake me. And because he's good, I ought to ask him for what he has that is good for me, so I can be a blessing to somebody else. Is there anybody here that understood that Jesus stated that this gift is the Holy Spirit, the most important gift that the followers of Jesus would ever need. So I never ask him for a bill to be paid. Ask for the Holy Ghost. It's Instead of asking for a healing, ask for the Holy Ghost. Instead of asking for that child or that husband to come back home, ask for the Holy Ghost. Because believers are not to pray for the Holy Spirit because this prayer is for the disciples. They've given us uh, Pentecost uh, in Acts chapter 2. Uh, they waited for the day of Pentecost uh, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them uh, like cloven tongues of fire. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, that's how the church got its power. Uh, it didn't come from being good. Uh, it came because God is good. Uh, and I got to tell somebody here today uh, that I'm not giving up on the God I serve. Uh, I see something I need uh, and I ask for it. Uh, but even though he may not give it to me when I want him to give it to me. He's always right on time. I see somebody else in need and I ask for it. It's not because I'm good. It's because he's good. And even though he don't give it to me when I think they need it, I keep on knocking because he will supply all my needs. I got to get out of here, but there's somebody here today that has a need from God. It's not a selfish need. It's a sincere need. And I'm so glad today to tell you huh, that you gotta just keep on knocking. Huh. Touch a neighbor say keep on knocking. Huh. You gotta be bold in your prayers. Huh. You gotta be vigilant in your prayers. Huh. You gotta be persistent in your prayers. Huh. You gotta keep on pushing. Huh. Which means you gotta pray until something happens. Huh. Is there anybody here huh, that's got a prayer life huh, that's going from downstairs huh, to upstairs? Huh. Touch a neighbor say get out of the basement. Huh. It's time to go upstairs. I got to tell somebody here that God is a prayer answering God. I'm so glad that he looks beyond my faults and sees every one of my needs because he told me to pray until something happens. Is there anybody here that heard a story about a famous musician? This was a famous musical director who one day had gave a big concert. He had assembled the band and the orchestra. And among the band was a man who played the trumpet. And in this orchestra, the director couldn't hear the trumpet. So he told the trumpet player to blow a little louder. The trumpet player started blowing a little louder. And after a few minutes, the director said, blow a little louder. The trumpet trail had leaks like Dizzy Gillespie. He started turning red. And he was blowing as hard as he could. But still the director said, louder, 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 louder. The trumpet player put the trumpet down. He called back to the director. He said, but where is the wind going to come from? And all I'm trying to tell you is, you can blow hard as you think you're going to blow. Storm clouds rise, wind they blow. But everything is still in the hands of an almighty God. You can be the best 
said, you think you should be. But if God ain't in the picture, all your labor is in vain. You got to ask the Savior to help you. You got to ask him to send his Holy Ghost power. And is there anybody here that say, I'm not afraid to keep on knocking. Lord, send your power now. Send your Holy Ghost power. Is there anybody here that wants the Holy Ghost power? If you want him, say yeah. Say yeah. Say There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this way. If your soul now ain't in Jesus, it will show it. Drift away. I've been saying there's a storm out. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving. So 